Um, I want to start with this piece because I think it's telling in terms of uh, a lot of the ways my practice has been working recently uh, in terms of scale uh, and material choices and palette um, and kind of conceptually the way I'm thinking about how the work is telling some kind of story. This piece is called uh, Stump and Dog um, and the story is something along the lines of you know Stump is where a dog may mark his territory, or uh, this could be like a game of fetch where these two are shooting out the tennis balls, and then after they're shot, the two kind of deflate and turn this other orange color, and uh, the dog brings back the tennis ball that's on um, the hexagon shape in the middle, which mimics the hexagon shape in the tube. Or again, it could be like um, you know, a, a pasta dinner where the two are some kind of pasta the dog sits on tomato cans. So um, kind of like these multiple layers of narrative happening at the same time is something that I'm excited about. Um, I think also just the themes of sports and bathrooms and food sort of come up over and over in the work. Um, so this is a good way to show kind of all of those happening at once. They're all hand built, they're all cone five. There's another view of that. A little bit. There's another piece called Plant on the left. It's that piece by itself. And a lot of the ready-mades started, they started by both a combination of uh, being an artist in residence at Reefology, uh, the San Francisco dump, which opened up my eyes to what can be a material, and, um, and also a way to use something besides a pedestal uh, to present work on. So that's kind of the, the platform that a lot of these other supplementary materials started from, and then from there they've become maybe more um, folded into the piece, pieces themselves. So sort of the next step for something like these boxes would be uh, three stacks of tissue boxes. So bringing it up off the floor a little bit, this is a lobster donut. Um, <laughs> talking about decadence a little bit, I guess. And I also like the idea that um, I noticed that jelly donuts and pork buns come in the same pink box, and they're like both filled with the same sort of like red goo. And, and sort of those, those like mysteries are, are something I'm interested in. Here's the back view of that one. Um, this, and this is a piece shown with, and this is at Root Division in San Francisco. And this piece is called Slice. Um, so it's ball and talon wood claws, and then a thick, really heavy marble slab, um, and then ceramic piece, and then the top is covered in rubber, and then the back part is just a pile of um, real blueberries. So the combination of materials here brings a lot of different hardnesses and textures and sort of rates of decay um, between you know rubber, ceramic, marble, wood, fruit. And I think the thing for me that really ties this piece together is the blueberries because it offers kind of a level of slippage to the piece where it can be seen as maybe like a piece of blueberry pie or like a cheese and fruit plate that sits on a nice piece of marble or like some dinosaur with these droppings behind it. Um, so again, sort of like these multiple stories happening at the same time is uh, kind of one of the goals for the work. Here are those guys at the MFA show. So they're a little lower to the ground there. And then the piece in the background there is called Shirt. Um, I think domestic objects come in a lot, or kind of, you know, the things we encounter on a daily basis. It's something I have been thinking about. Um, and this idea of laundry as sculpture or laundry as landscape. Um, this piece also has little hermit crab shells kind of tucked away in little nooks and crannies. Um, so something like the shirt as something you take ritually put on and shed. Um, so you know these material choices that have some kind of common thread um, and start to make some kind of argument or you know, some kind of funnel. So they missed the inspiration. <laughs> um, two more from the MFA show. Sometimes I'll kind of group two together that start to be in communication with each other. This is pyramid and volcano. Um, and then the surface of the platform is just on fire slits left to crack. 
kind of giving it that track here as well. So all things that kind of reference um, the ancient, um, and then a pyramid, something that maybe harnesses energy, and a volcano, one that maybe exudes energy. Um, at the base of the pyramid is lemonade powder, and under the volcano is tang powder. Uh, so kind of like sugar as pigment, I guess. I also realized teaching this classes here these past two weeks that pretty much every kid makes a volcano. And lots of kids also make pyramids. So this is, these are kind of like big kid projects. This is, this is the second volcano I've made. Um, and this is a more recent work and sort of a, a more, like, this is the direction a lot of the ready-mades are taking now where it's still acting as the base, but it's also finding its way into into the, the idea of the piece and kind of pre-planned into, okay, this is gonna go here. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, also, this one deals with function a little bit. Uh, this piece is essentially a, a lava lamp or a light. Um, and the, the original idea was that the volcano spins, the black part on top of the cheese balls is a fan base, a ceiling fan base. So the idea is that the volcano spins this way, and the lava lamp sort of spins this way, so it's kind of like this, rub your kind of thing. It doesn't totally work that way, but um, that, was, that was the goal. This was the whole MFA show, so this is sort of my area. Um, and I think the work sort of sings the most when it's all seen together. And I've, I've been thinking about bodies of work almost like a, an album. Um, where each piece is a track, and you know, they're similar in scale and height and kind of palette. Um, and there's something almost like democratic about it, where one isn't really seen as like the leader of it. Um, and each one can work on its own, but when they're seen together, you kind of get a better idea of um, my approach to me. And this is my studio in San Francisco, where I've been working for about the past year and working there a lot of the projects have um, shrunk a little bit just for the size of the kiln and for storage um, and these are some of the newer works so this one and, and with the newer works i think titles have become it played a bigger role where in the, the mfa show pretty much every title is just one word um, and now the the title starts to sort of become more lyrical. This one's called Cold Turkey. Um, and on the bottom there are four plungers and then the the wood of the plunger comes up through the cube and out the top. On the front is a rotary cone dial. Um, and on the side is a, like a chicken leg. Um, so it's kind of a safe, it's kind of uh, like a bone that you pull the bone out of. It's kind of a creature. Um, there's also, I've, I've been really into this combination of rubber and ceramics together as two materials that I think, I think the origin is a plunger and a toilet as being next to each other, but also like these two sculptural materials that are durable in their own ways, contain color in pretty unique ways, can be matte or glossy. They sort of start as a liquid that becomes more solid um, and sort of fill in where the other one lacks a little bit. Um, here's a piece that's similar in kind of design in the sense that it's using a tool, flipping that tool into a leg, and then building a sculpture on top of it. Um, those are rubber mallets with spurs. And this one also has a bone with the, um, the and then there's a pop tart coming out of the top. Uh, and this is a good example of, this is the sketch for that piece. So the new work also starts from sketches and they stay pretty true to the sketches. Um, and actually the, the process now is almost like sketchbook sketch and then colored sketch and then ceramic miniature sketch and then the final project. So I think that process has allowed me some room to filter out ideas that don't make it through that whole gauntlet um, and kind of made me more conscious of the choices I'm making. Sometimes 
pieces kind of get away from me in terms of material, and I think this one may have done that, where it's like maybe I'm using too many kind of strange materials. Um, in this one, we have an operation board game, and then like these really large tuna cans, um, and then the whole ceramic piece is macheed in seaweed paper, like nori paper, and then we have some fake seaweed paper around around the operation game, and then a dentist mirror and a thermometer. And I think the idea for me in this piece is like it's a creating a space that um, we intuitively know that we're supposed to enter into and then take something out of it, whether it's the operation board game or grocery store sushi or like a dentist on a patient or even like a car mechanic with like this piece jacked up um, and it has these bolts on the side. So it's like even like a Frankenstein model or like maybe even like a resurrection model. And I think using a lot of these foods, whether it's blueberries or Pop-Tarts or seaweed or cheese balls, um, what I'm really trying to get at is sort of breaking the habits of how we experience and use objects that we come into contact with and sort of recognizing their sculptural potential. Um, this is the piece that's on display over in the studio. Um, this one, I guess this one is the, the operation game is functional in a sense. The same way that this is a functional chessboard. Um, and I think that association is fairly logical between a tank and a chessboard. Um, and then act, creating some type of solace along with that, with the concrete behind it. Along with that kind of weirder material work, um, I've been making a series of heads, which is in a way is just a return to the traditional clay handling. Um, even though that started to transform a little bit too. And he's also started teaching classes and wanting to do demos on work, but doing it on something that I'm actually building. So it's not really like throwaway demo as much as it's like having students experience and engage with the way that I'm making. Um, all the faces are pretty passive and don't really have mouths. Um, and aren't really looking anywhere specific. So they're like, the, the main goal is that they're easy to be around, they're easy to have in the room and not really dominate the room. Um, this one and this one are covered in a rubber type of paint, um, which actually looks a lot like blade. Um, and then here's one more. In my mind, I've been calling these guardians. Uh, someone recently called them harlequins, which I thought was kind of nice. But yeah, there you know, lots of nose activity, um, bright colors, but still sort of subdued. That's kind of what I'm going for with those. And I think the more I do these and the more I do the other work, the more they start to kind of, you know, they were on parallel tracks and now they're starting to get to the same road. And here's an example of sort of how that's happening. This one's where it foregoes the face and it's just the nose. Um, the idea for this is that, this is still in progress, but that uh, one of those Roomba vacuums sits under it, and it's kind of this nose that sort of just like zooms around and sniffs up dirt. Um, we'll see if it works. And there's a sketch for that one. And then a couple other sketches for pieces that may, may get made and may not get made. A lot of kids make pancakes too, which is another, you know, that was a realization I had in the past few weeks. Um, but you know, this is also an example of maybe, um, maybe these can just live as sketches. I haven't started any of these works. I don't have a lot of, you know, ready-made material yet for these works. Um, and doing the sketches allows me the time to really think about is this worth worth completing into like a finalized sculpture or can it just sort of live in this idea that idea on a piece of paper for a while. Um, this is one that I want to do here. This is kind of the in my mind at least right now, like the magnet like this in my residency. This is like the biggest piece that I do. Um, kind of a statue of liberty. 